So in this plug we'll cover four of the most important rules for the definite integral. We're not going to prove these rules but simply rely on geometric argument for the validity of these results. The first result deals with the integral of a constant. The integral from a to b of a constant c is equal to c times b minus a. So let's look at the reason for this. In this case my function which is always between the integral sign and the dx symbol is c, a constant. And the graph of a constant is just a horizontal line like this. So this is f of x equal to c. Now I'm supposed to integrate this from a to B. And so the integral is this red area right here. Well, this is just a rectangle whose base is B minus A and whose height is C. So the area is C times B minus A. You can see that this formula will give you the right answer even if C is negative. If c is negative, the graph of the function is a horizontal line below the x-axis. And in this case we should count the area as negative, and a negative value is precisely what we will get when c is negative. The second rule deals with the integral of a constant times a function. So what this says is that if I want to integrate a constant times a function, I can take the constant outside the integral and just compute the integral of the function itself. Let's look at the geometric argument. I have an arbitrary function. Let's say it looks something like this. This is my f of x. Let's just say that c is equal to 2 then what will be the graph of c times f of x? Well, if I need to multiply my function by 2, the y value will be twice as large. So let me just mark it out, twice as large, approximately here and here. 2 times f of x will look something like this. This will approximately be 2 times f of x. The left-hand integral is then represented by this entire area right here. And the integral of f of x, well, that's this area right here. And it should be clear that the red area must be precisely twice as big as the blue area. If you don't see it, just remember that this distance here, the y value of the f function and this distance here is precisely the same. We get the graph of 2 times f of x simply by doubling the y value of f of x. That in turn means that this green area marked here must be precisely the same as the blue area. So adding the blue and the green area will give me the red area. So let's take a look at the third rule. This deals with the integral of a sum of two functions. So this third rule says that if I want to integrate the sum of two functions, f and g, I will get the same result if I integrate f by itself, g by itself, and add these two integrals. So let's look at the geometry. Let's do a simple case where f of x is just a linear function like this and g of x is just some constant like this. To get the graph of f of x plus g of x I simply add these two functions vertically. So it will start at the same place as g and then it will increase, have the same slope as f, so the sum will look something like this, f of x plus g of x. 
The left hand integral is represented by this red area, the graph under the sum of these two functions. The first integral on the right hand side is represented by this blue area, the area under f of x, and the second integral on the right hand side is represented by this green area. Hopefully you can see that the sum of the blue and the green area must be precisely the red area, which is what this result says. If you don't see it, just note that this yellow area right here between f and f plus g, well that yellow area must be exactly the same as the green area, the one under g. And it is clear from the graph that the blue plus the yellow is the red. Well if the yellow and the green is the same then the blue plus the green must also be the red. Finally the fourth rule deals with breaking up the domain of the integral. So here c is a constant that lies in between a and b. So what it says is that if I want to integrate the function from a to b, I can integrate it from a to c and from c to b and add these two together. The geometry is a little bit simpler in this case. I have some function here, f of x. I have an a and I have a b. The integral on the left is represented by this area here. Now I pick a constant c which is somewhere in between a and b. The first integral on the right, well that's this part here. And the second integral on the right, well then we should go from c to b, so that's this part here. And if I add these two parts together, I will get the area represented by the first integral. 